Daniel Watkins, and we're at the Gonzo Museum in downtown Aspen. Uh, we're showing Tom Benton original silkscreen works of art that he created with Hunter Thompson in the late 60s, early 70s. And the main goal of uh, writing the book about Tom Benton originally was to take all the powerful Vietnam posters, like the American Dream. This was created in 1968. America was 1969. And the idea was to show people these powerful images from the Vietnam War and show them to people today. And that journey led to finding over 500 works by Benton. And uh, the book, Thomas W. Benton, Artist Activist, recently won the Colorado Book Award. And so we're showcasing his art in the Gonzo Museum, as well as Ralph Steadman Originals and Hunter Thompson shotgun paintings. Shotgun paintings where Hunter would take a photo, um, put it on dry mount, put it on uh, plywood, and then they would um, take it out behind his house and they would take little airplane liquor bottles, fill them with paint, and then tie a string around them and hang them in front of the plywood. And then they'd stand back and shoot the little bottles of paint that would create this splattering effect. And so we have an original self-portrait by Hunter S. Thompson as well as a work that he did with Warren Zevon, uh, concert posters that both Warren and Hunter shot and then signed. But we've got, we've got three iconic, four iconic Ralph Steadman works. Uh, the Sheriff, and this is the Pirate Edition. And the story with this one is that um, Hunter and Tom Benton had, or Hunter and Ralph Steadman had um, a printer in Kentucky, Joe Petro, create a five color silk screen uh, of an image of Hunter photographed by David Heiser. This is Hunter in his full campaign regalia. And he had shaved his head because he wanted to refer to his opponent as my long haired opponent. And um, so this print. They created four of these initially, but Ralph couldn't get his hands on them. And the story goes that he stole the four out of the printer's office. And then one of the four prints he painted on top of, which is this work. So you see this has the additional black. And then he returned this piece to the uh, printer and said, let's make the addition out of this one, this painting with this added stuff. And they did an addition of 77. And Hunter signed them, as well as Ralph Steadman. But the original version, only three uh, still survive that do not have Ralph's art on them. So this is called the Pirate Edition, and this is uh, three out of four. And then uh, lastly, this is the um, Lizard Lounge, which is a great scene from uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And uh, the piece speaks for itself. It's also numbered out of 77 uh, and signed Ralph Steadman. Now uh, this is from the memorial. Um, when they shot Hunter's Ashes out of the cannon, uh, Johnny Depp and crew helped uh, do this. So they made a memorial print, and you see Hunter flying out of the cannon sort of right here. And then the piece is signed by all the sort of members of the so-called family, Ed Bradley, Bill Murray, Anita Thompson, Layla Nablesee, Jan Winter, Bob Broadus, Deborah Fuller, Johnny Depp, Kurt Vonnegut, Douglas Brinkley. And we have a complete set, a double set of the wall posters that were created. Let's see if I can get some light. Uh, in 1970 as a run-up to the campaign for sheriff. So uh, these were two-sided posters similar to like a newspaper. So you can see sort of the text bleeding through. The reverse of this has writing on it, so it'd be like a two-sided piece of paper. And they use these as a sort of propaganda tool to generate support for the freak power movement. And they only printed 500 of each and sold them for one dollar on the streets. But the important thing about these posters is they served as sort of a vehicle for Hunter to develop his gonzo literary style. And these posters allowed him to sort of let loose with his style. And so each one has a story, and it's all about the Battle of Aspen and how um, they were fighting for the character of the town, the environment, uh, you know, the old guard versus the new guard. And this is sort of what they thought was happening to the town with... Uh, the masses coming to town and they wanted to rename Aspen Fat City in an effort to sort of deter tourists. You know, Aspen sounds so alluring and the Fat City may, maybe not so much. Uh, and then this is the only double issue they created together. Um, these are some of the rarest works that Hunter ever created with Tom. And this is opens up and in here it has a, a column about the old sheriff, uh, Sheriff Whitmire, who Hunter was running against, as well as a uh, a beautiful photo of Jilly here. The idea behind Jilly was that they wanted to uh, publish a photo of the My Lai Massacre, sort of the dead bodies, women and children on the road in Vietnam, and uh, Hunter and Tom couldn't get anybody upset about the war or anybody energized, so they thought, if we really want to make people upset, let's uh, publish a picture of a beautiful naked woman. 
And then sure enough, they had kids distributing them around town is how they got them out. And so the sheriff got calls about children in town distributing pornography and they made them sort of heavy handed cut her out of a lot of the issues, uh, which sort of served their point. And then all this led up to his final campaign announcement. And this is uh, Aspen Wall poster number five, the first version of the iconic Thompson for Sheriff poster. And on the back, it has a explanation of what the campaign's about. And uh, the main point that I like to always say is, it says, which raises a point about freak power that I'd like to make before we close the coffin. For some reason that has to embarrass me as a writer, I failed to make it clear that I use the word freak in a positive, sympathetic sense. In the ominous, ugly, splintered context of what is happening in 1970 America, a lot of people are beginning to understand that to be a freak is an honorable way to go. And then here we'll end with, again, the iconic photo of Hunter and his campaign regalia. And um, <clears throat> I'll briefly read that quote, which is really great. It says, Would you sell peyote to this man? Dr. Hunter S. Thompson, defeated candidate for sheriff in the recent election, is shown here accepting a collect telephone call from Argentina in his Jerome Hotel headquarters two days before the deal went down. Dr. Thompson declined to comment on the nature of the call and later maced a wire service reporter who attempted to check it out through the switchboard. In this, the ill-tempered freak power candidate's final campaign photo, he appears in full battle regalia, gold-rimmed greaser glasses, magnesium police badge, 69th Infantry Division lapel, wireless wristband transceiver, and his silver Aztec eternal life pendant, a gift from Emiliano Zapata's granddaughter, Jilly, who we saw over here. And lastly, Dr. Thompson, who carried three of the four city precincts, was massively rejected by voters in the populous down county suburbs around Agnewville, Snowmass, and the sprawling Gerbazdale trailer court. In his final election night speech for the national press and TV, the candidate lost control of himself and had to be restrained. This is my last press conference, he shouted. You won't have Hunter Thompson to kick around anymore, you pig fuckers. Then he rushed out of the room to confer with his personal swami, who later told reporters that Dr. Thompson had decided to depart the country in the spring and take up permanent residence at a luxurious ashram on the Bay of Bengal. Uh, the goal of what the museum's about here is to sort of capture the spirit and the beauty of their freak power movement and the gonzo ethos in general. And Tom Benton sums up Gonzo, Ralph Steadman sums up Gonzo, Hunter Thompson is Gonzo. And so the idea is, uh, we're in downtown Aspen, and Aspen's changed a lot since uh, the way it was when all these posters were made, and we want to sort of turn people on and educate people to the rich history and the activist culture that was active here. And uh, today when people think of Aspen, they think of Gucci or Prada or Glitter Gulch, when in reality there's this rich history that we're trying to champion through the Gonzo Museum.